Live from the NBC4 studios in high definition, this is NBC4 Midday, where accuracy matters. Well, if you're a Browns fan or a Bengal fan or a Steeler fan, you didn't have a favorite team to root for in the Super Bowl, so there's a pretty good chance you did have a favorite Super Bowl commercial. Don Ditzhazy from RND Advertising joins us this midday to break down some of those 30-second messages. Was there a trend or anything this year that you could pick out? You know, it's interesting. What new was new this year was uh, Pepsi decided to forego doing any spots, mm. and they took their money and pushed it into a cause-related marketing campaign where communities could uh, buy for some dollars. The second big thing that I saw, social media, very big. Before the game, they tied in, uh, Coke tied in a little bit to give money to the boys uh, mm -hmm. the, and girls clubs of America, and they filtered that out, and even during the game, you had a lot of uh, tweets going on about what the commercials were, yeah. what they liked. That's interesting. All right, who are the big winners this year? I think winners, um, Bud Light did a nice one where it was um, uh, the book club, mm -hmm. and I think that was funny. It was a nice punch at the end. Uh, Doritos. Doritos had a few string through there that were pretty good. The one I really liked was the Annie Bark collar, where the, the collar went on yeah. uh, with the individual, and it was like a payback. I thought that was pretty funny, too. Yeah, well, that was pretty good. And you know, let's talk about these spots. Two point, about $2.8 million yeah. dollars for a 30-second spot. Do these companies see a, a immediate payoff, or is it down the road with this much money? Involved? I think it's down the road. The phone will ring. The product will tick up. They'll get some lift on their product. There's no doubt. Um, but what they're going to have to do is, again, social media before and, and use it during the game, use it afterwards, and use every bit they can. Now, one of the um, uh, commercials had Emerald Nuts, and it had yes. Pop Secret. That's, a, that's something new, too. Nobody mm -hmm. combined. Now, they're owned by the same parent company, right. but they had this commercial, and they used both products. It could have worked probably a little bit better, but mm -hmm. what I, it was just a bad commercial. Yeah. So I think it killed both of them. Because RMD, do you take a lot of notes during the Super Bowl to help you when it comes to advising your clients? Well, you know, it's interesting because we critique we critique a lot. We look at different things going out there. And that night, through Yammer, all we had uh, sp you know, sporadic at parties, at bars, and at home, and everybody com um, communicated back and forth. So it was kind of interesting what we do. And we were analyzing what's good and what doesn't work. We always had to look at strategy. There's always that logic, that strategy behind anything. So we do look and analyze. Dom Ditz, Hazy, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I did a little research, $42,000. That's how much the first spot cost in 1967. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's truly it's a amazing. long way. Yeah. <laughs> Don, thanks for joining us. Oh, no we appreciate it. Well, a basketball